Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, and, well, this isn't a playthrough, more just a discussion over what's going on. Let's just say the entire gaming community is just facepalming right now because yes. of this. Earlier today, Nintendo has stated that they're going to start monetizing Let's Play channels that infringe on their copyright for themselves. What this means is that any LPers, such as Brain Scratch, the Super Gaming Brothers, Chuck Conroy, Peanut Butter, Peanut Butter Gamer, you name it, if they've done any playthroughs with Nintendo uh, video games, if you will, they're going to start getting monetized, and pretty much all the revenue is going to go straight to Nintendo. Dick move, Nintendo. Dick move. Well, as far as there are claims for... Uh, well, here, let me... This uh, this was posted on ScrewAttack.com, all right? I'll post... We'll, put, we'll post the link when we put this video up. Yeah. But I'm going to go ahead and read it off, all right? And, uh, no, typical. The uh, first picture you see is fucking Wario. Wario! <laughs> mm-hmm. Anyways, I'm going to go ahead and read this off, all right? He's the new face of Nintendo now. Yeah. Get the fuck out of here, Mario. All right. So let me go ahead and read this off. Nintendo loves your Let's Play channels. So much so that they are trying to make money off of it. You see, just because you paid for your copy of Super Mario Galaxy doesn't mean you have the right to play through it on, on to completion on your YouTube channel. But Nintendo isn't bitter. They're happy to let you keep running it, so long as they receive all the ad revenue. And legally, they can do this. In working with YouTube, they have the ability to find any content infringing on their copyright and monetize it for themselves, and not the other and not the channel's owner. Here is a direct quote from the company. As part of our ongoing push to ensure Nintendo's content is shared across social media channels in an appropriate and safe way, we became a YouTube partner and, as such, in February 2013, we registered our copyright content in the YouTube database. For most fans, videos will not result in any changes. However, for those videos featuring Nintendo-owned content, such as images or audio of a certain length, Adverts will now appear at the beginning, next to, or at the end of the clips. So if this continues, Let's Play channels might be in a lot of trouble financially depending on how much they enjoy their Nintendo games. With other, com with other companies already looking to crack down on this, I wonder who will be the next IP holder to assume the monetization rights. Square Enix? Sega? EA? Share your thoughts in the comments. And that's the end of the quote-unquote discussion. Me and Trevor were talking about this earlier over Skype, and... And... You know what? I might be wrong about this, but th I think this is just a way for them to, uh... Get back all the money for the flop that was the Wii U. Well, it's not technically a flop, but it's not exactly doing well on its own. I mean, let's look at it, for example, alright? First we had the GameCube, which wasn't exactly the best system in the series, but hey, it, it was, it, it it was still a good game. It, it was still moderately console. well at launch. Yeah. Then we had the Wii. The Wii introduced the gimmick of the Wii mode, motion control, you know, the whole spiel. And honestly, it didn't do any better than the GameCube. However, with the Wii U, yeah, great title. Wee, wee, wee. I sound like a fucking ambulance whenever I say that fucking. I, th I think that's how they came up with the title. Shigeru Miyamoto was in Italy and he saw, saw an Italian police car go by. Call Nintendo. Hey, guys. I got, got the name of the name. title. <laughs> got a name for the console. What is it? Listen to this. Wee, wee. Genius. Brilliant. Give this man a promotion. You can't. I'm head of the company. But, Never mind. Okay. I'm just going to go off on a quick tangent real quickly. Before they came out with the Nintendo Wii, it was called the Nintendo Revolution. That was a cool name. Mm -hmm. And then they went to Wii. That... Okay. Um, anyways, we're getting off topic here. Um, with the Wii U, it was basically just a HD version of the Wii with this really big bulky-ass controller with a huge screen That thing on. is bigger than a fucking Game Gear, and a Game Gear was huge. Yeah. Like, uh, <laughs> 12 inches long. This thing is like 14. It's like, what the fuck? Yeah. Now, as far as it having HD, okay, that's a good plus, I guess. It gives you reason to play 
your Nintendo games on an HD TV as opposed to your grandma's TV. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> but as far as the console is concerned, it's not doing well at all. No, and I, and I no, and I think that's because they figured that if they were to release the Wii U before the Xbox 720 and PS4, which I think are due to come out the first debut later this year, they figured they cash in the next gen console race, but they only have one game for the system, Mario U. Yeah. That's not counting Nintendo Land, which ships with the console, or and Lego the or Lego City, and all those third party games like Arkham City Armored Edition, which is coming out soon. Mass Effect but 3. They, they didn't think ahead. So I think what it is is revenue is dropping faster than the Hiroshima bomb. Now they're desperate to make back the money that they blew on the damn thing. And so they're attacking the YouTube LPs. And by that, they're going to lose more for a short-term quick fix, as you said. They're going to lose more in the long run because fans will stop buying their products if they keep if they continue to do this. Yeah. Here, here's the thing, all right? Here's the thing about YouTube LPs, all right? We're basically advertising their games for free. Now, if people are watching the LPs, they're going to want to see more of the game. If they're going to want to see more of the game, they're going to want to buy the game. And who gets the money if they buy the game? The company. Mm -hmm. So, I don't understand why you need to take from the LPers as well. I mean, I can understand... Yeah, copyright infringement. We're guilty of that. We're all guilty of that. Yeah, that, but, that, that's kind of unavoidable when it comes to a Let's Play. Yeah, it is unavoidable. Now, here's the thing, though. You're not punishing us for copywriting. Otherwise, you would be flagging and striking us and all this other crazy stuff. But, in fact, I think some companies like Sony actually promote it. Yeah, like Sega, for example. They don't want some particular video or video game, I don't know what the hell it is, getting shown at all, so they automatically strike it and flag it and all kind of crazy shit. But with Nintendo, they're telling us, yeah, sure, we can copyright infringement all we want, so long as we're getting all the ad revenue. But here's the thing, some LPRs on YouTube are pretty much doing this as a job as well as a hobby. Yeah. They have to... Well do this in order to make ends meet, in order to have a roof over their head, clothes on their back, food Brain in the scratch, Brain Scratch, SGB, PewDiePie, they do this not only as a hobby, which it started out as, but it's their main form of income. Nintendo is basically fucking them over because they shot themselves in the foot by releasing the Wii U before season with one game. It w if they would have waited a little longer, had a few more games available for it, it would have helped them a little more. But they were so quick to jump the gun that they tripped over their own feet. Think back to the previous launch year with the Xbox 360, PS3, and Wii. Yes, the Xbox 360 debuted in 2005. And despite the Red Ring of Death, it had, what, 10 launch titles? Yeah, something like the that. The PS3 had 10 launch titles. Sadly, only one of them, Resistance Fall of Man, was any good. Mm -hmm. But it had plenty of titles to choose from at launch. The and, PS1, the N64, the Dreamcast, they had like 20 games to choose from. Okay, not maybe not the Dreamcast, but they had 20 games to choose from launch. Yeah, and yes, we understand. Y'all had some third-party titles that y'all released alongside the Wii U, but those games we already played maybe a year, maybe even two years ago. Batman Arkham City Armored Edition. Assassin's Creed 3. Mass Effect 3. These are games we've already played on other systems. So why would we buy them for the Wii U? I mean, I can understand. You're starting to support third-party titles. We get that. But but because their main franchises are... But because their two biggest franchises are Zelda and Mario, they need to rely on third-party games and indie games in order to actually make any profit. It's and it's like we said here on Skype. They, they've they got uh, three... We, you and me each made three points. The fans want a real new console without stupid gimmicks. The fans want more game variety, not just Mario and Zelda all the time. And the fans want care and hard work put into the game, not simple plots that worked back in the 80s. However, 
my argument, and like I said here, I'm not defending them, I'm just saying. Ever since the Wii, Nintendo's been about nothing but stupid gimmicks. How many peripherals are there for the Wii? The Wii Zapper, which I'll admit is great for those first-person shooters and on-rail shooters. That's about it. The Wii the, Fit Board. The Wii, the Wii Wheel, the Wii Fit Board, the, the Wii Fishing Rod. Ew. Two. I get that Mario and Zelda are the biggest franchises, but unfortunately, that's all the Nintendo knows. Three, Nintendo put hard work and care into their games and not give us a rehash of a game we played 30 years ago. You out of your fucking mind. And with that, I made other points. Like, what about some of the other IPs? F Zero, Star Fox, Kirby, and Metroid, yeah. Yeah. And gimmicks are not fun. Just because your competitors do it after you does not make it a good idea. In fact, it's worse. Yeah, I mean, Spe- seriously. Speaking, but... speaking of which, uh, wait. You know what? Actually, I just thought of something now. The Wii is actually actually a knockoff of a PS2 peripheral. You remember the iToy? Yeah, you're right. I do remember the Wii. The Wii, the Wii wait, 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 no. will be a knockoff of the iToy. Wait. I, I would think that would probably be the Kinect as opposed to the uh, Wii. The Xbox no, Kinect? Yeah, I know. They're pretty the much iToy, the same thing. But, but the iToy came out in like 2004. The Wii yeah. came out two years later. And so... the, iToy, the iToy failed miserably, didn't it? The iToy had a few successes. The only thing it was really good for was Dance Dance Revolution. That's about it. Uh, okay, I can, I, I can understand that. Even though I've never played DDR, I can understand that much. But and then the Wii came out, and then following the Wii, we got PlayStation, PlayStation Move. Move, Xbox Connect. Yeah, all all peripherals that we don't exactly need. I mean, let's let's take a look at uh, Angry Joe, for example. All right? He has a Connect. He and he, wa- he hates it. Sonic Freeriders, Dragon Ball Connect. He hates it. I think the so only game... So much so, in fact, he actually he actually stormed into GameStop and demanded his money back for Sonic Freeriders. I think the only game that he's played on the Kinect that wasn't it, absolute crap was this thing called Gunstringer. But that's probably the only one I could think of. Look at Steel Battalion. Or as he puts it, Steel Battalion. Get your fucking hand off that. <laughs> He can't play the Kinect because it doesn't cooperate. Then we have the PlayStation Move, which is a shameless, shameless rip copy. Off. Yeah, ripoff of the Wiimote. Yeah, it, it even comes with something that looks like the Wiimote. They call it the PlayStation Baton. It's a Wiimote. I never bothered to get the damn thing because I'm like, why would I need that thing? It's just a Wiimote for the PS3. And spe- speaking of these peripherals, which Nintendo has been pretty much shoving in our faces for the motion control, no, motion control, it was fun when it came when it first debuted in 2006. Well, actually, no, even though it didn't work back in the 80s when they first tried it. You remember the power mat and the, uh, the little, I don't know what it's called, the Angry Video Game that reviewed them a long time ago. The power wall? Not the power, not the power glove. Uh, I I forget what it was called. It was like this box thingy that you open up. You could play punch out with it and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's not playing a game. Yeah, I I get it. People would want to do that for physical activity. You know what? That's what Wii Sports is for. Yeah. Which we which we Sports. How the hell did that sound more than Mario? Anyway, <laughs> that's anyway. not playing a game. Playing a game is sitting back on the couch with a controller in hand and pushing a button. Or a few buttons and moving a control stick, but not using your body and pretending you're on a surfboard in a game that doesn't fucking work. Yeah. In any case, what well, we're basically well, we're actually getting a little off topic talking and, about the and, fucking and, gimmicks. And, and Anthony saying that he wants to record a playthrough of Sonic Free Riders. It kind of makes me glad now that we're not monetized because if we were and that were to. Wait, no, that's a 360 thing. My bad. Yeah, it's a 360 in Sega, but in any case... um, If we were monetized, they'd be getting the money that we'd be getting off of Ocarina of Time and Fusion. Yeah, even though we're not getting any money right now. We're just just doing this for fun. I don't know how much that would be, but they'd be getting it all. We'd be getting shit. They'd probably be getting a shiny nickel from us. That's about it. (laughs) It's our shiny nickel. Too bad we're taking it, but... But I renamed him Philip. Anyways, back to the topic at hand. Nintendo is basically taking revenue from Let's Players, alright? 
this might not affect us right now per se, but in the long run, it can affect us. It will affect the big names. Yeah, Chaka Conroy, Chaka Brain Scratch. Chaka Conroy, Game Drums, Brain Scratch, Hellfire, SGB. Angry Joe. <laughs> well, Angry Joe's a reviewer, so I'm not sure if that would count. It would technically count because he still has. Um, well, I don't know if it would count towards Angry Joe, but he, do, he does mostly 360 games. Yeah, it, it technically wouldn't count against him, but. Let's just say that Microsoft started doing that. Then it would affect him. Microsoft doesn't need to pull this stunt because they are making plenty of profit off of their games. They're still they're probably still rolling in the dough from the first Halo. Yeah. In any case, why don't we look at some of the comments from some people on uh, the ScrewTag homepage. We're not going to label any names, all right? But we're just going to throw out some... Uh, comments that we've seen on the channel itself. All right. The first one I see. Wait a second. By that logic, they would be attempting to claim copyright on some fan reviews, depending on the amount of gameplay or sound in the video, thus violating Digital Millennium Copyright Act One. Call BS here. Yeah. As far as the uh, Digital Millennium Copyright Act, I actually pulled up a wiki on it, and it basically states that it's a United States copyright law that in two 1996 treaties of the World Intellectual Property Organization, or WIPO. It criminalizes production and dissemination of technology, devices, or services intended to circumvent measures commonly known as the Digital Rights Management, or DRM, that controls access to copyrighted works. It also criminalizes the act of circumventing access control whether or not there is actual infringement of the copyright itself. In addition, the DMCA heightens the penalties for copyright infringement on the internet, citation needed, passed on October 12, 1998, by a unanimous vote in the United States Senate that signed into law by President Bill Clinton on October 28, 1998, the DMC amended Title 17 of the United States Code to extend the reach of copyright while limiting the liability of the providers of online services for copyright infringement by the users. The DMCA's principal innovation in the field of copyright, the exemption from direct and indirect liability of internet service providers and other inter intermi intermediaries, was adopted by the U European Union in the Electronic Commons Directive 2000. The, com the Copyright Directive 2001 implemented the 1996 WIPO Copyright Treaty in the EU. Translation? Uh, I don't have one. <laughs> it's a whole bunch of fancy words, but from what oh, I can... Wait, 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 wait. I, I, I was reading this comment as you were going over that. How is this discouraging people from Let's Play Nintendo games? Microsoft did it, and people still Let's Play Microsoft games? I'm playing a first-party Nintendo game, and nothing's happened to me since. When did, when did Microsoft do that? I actually don't remember that. Hold on. Look around. People should be And then there's this one comment, two comments down from that, that said what you said earlier. Hmm. If you want to read it. Let's see. Oh, the uh, Copyright Act thing? Uh, n no, two comments down. Oh, use ad block? No, 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 pass the one I read. Let's see. I see no problem with the people. Oh, wait. I don't see it, which, well, I'm not going to, I'm going to, I'm it not starts gonna... with, this is bad news for Nintendo. Oh, wait, I think I saw it a second ago. Uh, da, 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 da. Yeah, here we go. This is bad news for Nintendo. LPRs are like free advertising for games. 90% of the games I buy are from LP, Jot Reviews, and other advertisements that they may do. While, yes, some will still do this, those that make kill a piece for a living cannot do so and now not only will they no longer be living will be giving them free advertisement but more likely are than not they may skip over them because they because you need to balance fun with i'm having a hard time re understanding what this person wrote <laughs> i'll read it yeah lps are like free advertising for their games 90% of the games I buy are from LP Jot Reviews and other advertisements they may do. While well, yes, some of them still do it, those that make LPs for a living cannot do so, and now not only will they no longer be giving them free advertisements, but more likely than not, they may ask, 
they may skip over them because you need to balance fun and what will give me food in my my tum tum clothes on my back and a roof over my head. This may be the great short term deal with the thousands of videos that will be monetized, but in the long run, none of their new games will have any LPs and right now the Wii U is really lacking in its in this very category. Solid first party game or solid game that are much better on the Wii U. You need to learn how to read. Hold on a minute. Getting back to the topic at hand. There's a comment at the bottom of this page. This already happened for a video from Peanut Butter Gamer. His loan to develop videos are how he earns money, and one of the gameplay videos now redirects the ad revenue to Nintendo. Whether that's partial or complete, I'm not sure. But come on, Nintendo, this is free advertising for you. Plus, many of those games in question no longer sell in stores. Do you know how many LPs there are of Super Mario Bros. 1, The Legend of Zelda 1, Metroid 1? Too damn many. Yeah, and then there's another post by the same person. At least they're not shutting down the videos or filing strikes, but still, this is a seriously rude move on their part. Way to encourage people to show off your games, Nintendo. Yeah, it is rude. I mean, look, here, here's what I see, alright? LPers play the game. Fans watch the LPs. L fans want the games. They go and buy it. Now, what happens if you shut off the first thing? LPers don't play your games. Fans don't see your games. Fans don't want to buy your games. You might earn some money quickly with the revenue, but then you're going to realize that, oh shit, we fucked up. Big time. Yeah, this is a great quick fix, I'll give you that. But this is this is basically what I call the immature kid trying to take every shortcut and ev any shortcut he can in life you won't get very far. No, they shot themselves in the foot by doing this because they weren't thinking ahead. They were probably thinking like three months down the line, but not three years. Three In three years' time, they could lose a lot of money because people won't see their games advertised on the internet and they won't go to Walmart and buy them. Besides the fact that, again, the only real game that they have out right now for the Wii U is Mario U, which, if you played Mario 1... You played Mario Wii U. Yeah, pretty much. It's basically the same thing, only with one, one minor switch in the detail. Instead of the princess getting kidnapped, you get thrown out. That's the only difference. Other than that, we. Other than that, it's I mean, pretty much yeah, Mario yeah, Wii it, yeah. It, it, yeah. It, it. I'll admit, Mario games, no matter what they are, are really damn fun. The problem is. We already played it 30 years ago. And it's still just as similar as it was back then. Go right to win. Yeah. Sounds like a Sonic uh, Rush game. And, and The Legend of Zelda. The the plots may be, di may be slightly different in each game, but each game is still the same thing. Collect, collect the Triforce, beat Ganon. Well, in terms of uh, collecting stuff, it's collect... Um, plot MacGuffin, required item, then save the world. But other than that, yeah, it's pretty much the same thing. Now, granted, Legend of Zelda does have more story added to it, but again, it's basically the same thing. And here, here, here's a question, all right? Why not release another F Zero game? Why not release another Metroid Five? Yeah, it's been ten years since Metroid. Fusion. Other M doesn't count because it is a midquel between Super and Fusion. F Zero. What was the last one that came out? F Zero GX. And that was in like 2003. And what was the latest Kirby game to come out? Kirby's was is it Kirby's Epic Yarn or Kirby's Return to Dreamland? I think it's Epic Yarn. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think they. I don't know how well that one sold, but you, it's a game where you can't lose. Yeah. Hey, uh, Nintendo. It was okay to make a game like that in 1988. You know, make a game because back then gaming was primarily for the little kids. Those kids are now in their 30s with their own kids. They want to play a good game. They don't want to play a game where they can't 
lose. Why do you think so many people are turning to God of War? Because you can eventually lose. It's a challenge. Nintendo might renovate their gameplay, but they don't give us a challenge, and now they're actually giving themselves a challenge. Yeah, they're pretty much digging themselves in a hole now. I can hear the shovels. You keep digging, Nintendo, but you're not going to get any further unless you get yourself out of the hole. No, they're going... No, they'll get themselves further down. About six feet. They're already six feet. I think they're more than that. In any case, I'd say we ranted about this enough. Unless you have anything else to add to this. I don't know what else I can add. Nintendo's being stupid. They're being dickish. They're just plain rude. They're they're practically stealing from from the people who willfully play their games, put the footage on YouTube as not only something for their viewers to enjoy, but for as fans to it, see, hey, I actually want to try this game. Yeah, some of the games that I've picked up, like Symphony of the Night. And Final Fantasy VI, I got those from watching Brain Scratch. Simply didn't write for me as well. I didn't even know Castlevania all that well. I just knew that it was a game out there, but I didn't know about it until after I watched the playthrough of it, thanks to Brain Scratch. After that, I was like, I want to try this game, and sure enough, I got it on Xbox Live. And we, and it was because of Johnny and Elliot that I got back to playing the Crash Bandicoot games. As horribly as you did, why did you? Belly fall onto that nitro box. Because it was funny. <laughs> of course. <laughs> Come on. It even was it bear, was funny. It was funny. Even the bear was laughing. Yeah. <laughs> but basically, bottom what li- bottom line, Nintendo is not thinking ahead. They are being stupid as usual with their lack of logic. They they are taking their lack of logic and real world mentality from their video games and implementing that into their own businesses. And that's eventually going to kill them. There they... was a there was a time where Nintendo was the greatest video game company in the world. If it weren't for Nintendo, we wouldn't be where we are today. And the, now... the great video game crash of 1983 nearly destroyed the video game industry in its infancy. Nintendo pulled the industry out of that slump with Super Mario Brothers. 30 years later, Nintendo is, well, they're doing this. Yeah. They're pretty much trying to put the gaming industry back in the hole. I already see another crash coming within the next several years. I'm not, I don't know when, but sometime in the next several years. Because, at, again, not off topic, but when did Assassin's Creed come out? About six months ago? I... Honestly, I don't know which one. I think about it. I think about six months ago. There are already advertisements for Assassin's Creed Four. Yeah, which Ali has, uh, if you will, pre-ordered it, but she's not looking forward to it. She she's just buying it to fill the collection. To be honest, she's and, not expecting a whole lot out of it. Let's take a look at. It. Uh, well, I guess we can save that for another time. But let's just say. Not even given time for AC3 to sink in. Mm-hmm. Anyway. Yeah, I think we said enough. Well, that's said. Uh, I'm Trevor. And I'm Kenny. This is Spazit.coms. You have a good night. Thank you for watching. And, well, let's hope we don't wind up in another crash. Yeah. <laughs>